What's up, class? Uh, hope you're doing well. Look forward to seeing you when I when I get back from uh, vacation. But uh, biggest thing I want to go over with everybody is we're going over pension plans and stock options when it comes to um, everything that we're doing with an employer that offers a plan. So pension plan, these are awesome plans. They just aren't as readily available as they used to be. They used to be available to most people that work for somebody else. Any large corporation provided a pension and that's just not the case anymore. But with the pension, the whole idea is you work long enough for the same person. You're going to qualify for retirement benefits. You're going to get a monthly check. And the payments are going to continue until you die. You can also set it up so it can cover yourself and your spouse. So it'll cover both of your lives at a, at a reduced payment to make sure that both of you will continue to receive that check for both of your lives. And that is something you want to crunch the numbers on because if it's just on one life, it will be more. And so got to decide is it, is the extra amount worth only being over my life or do I want to make sure my, um, you know, worst case scenario, I pass away early that my spouse, because there is some risk and the risk is, Hey, if I pass away a year or two after retirement, my benefits are done. They're all gone. And so that could, um, that would stink. So as soon as you retire or you hit a minimum age requirement, you can start collecting on your pension benefits. And you can collect those in addition to Social Security. You can qualify for a partial pension. And so there's, there's, I've met several clients that have little pensions because they, they switched jobs or didn't work long enough at their last employer where they're getting $200 from one employer in the pension, $200 a month from another. And you know, it's better than nothing, but it's definitely not going to be what you need. It's important to just have a good understanding when you are working for your employer to have an idea of, Hey, who is managing this? Is it safe? Is it protected? There's been a lot of new legislation over the last 20 years that has come out to protect the participants of pension plans because there has been some mismanagement of the funds, whether it was a private management firm or the states or whoever. Right now, one of the most common pension plans is like in the state of Idaho is called Percy. And it is most common for school teachers, those in education or those that work directly for the state. The way Percy works is as long as you work for a school district then that is part of in Idaho and part of Percy, those years continue to add. And it's based off of the rule of 90. So how the rule of 90 works is you take 90 and you subtract the number of years. Uh, excuse me, let me start over. Take 90. So that's the, the number. So you take your age and you, multi and you add the number of years that you have worked within Percy. Once those two numbers equal 90, you can get your full pension. So if you started working at age 25, once you hit age 55, 55 plus 30 is 85. So once you get to 85, 80, 57 and a half, then you will hit the, the rule of 90. Sorry, that was a real tongue twister. So 57 and a half, if you start at age 25, is when you could, you know, retire and start receiving your full pension benefits through the state. Now, some of the legislation that's come out, the ERISA Act of 74, 
the whole intent of it was to protect employees' rights. But because of it, less employers offer pensions today because there's more red tape. It costs more. But again, there's been a lot of pension plans over the years that have gone terrible because they were just so mismanaged. And that has really ruined a lot of people's retirement. All pension plan information has to be fully disclosed to the U.S. Department of Labor. As far as participation, it is dependent on the plan. In Idaho, like with Percy, uh, as soon as you start full-time, the years start adding and going towards the Percy. You're going to have some sort of vesting. Most common is between five and seven years. And as far as the plan types, you got a contributory, non-contributory, Define contribution and define benefit. Defined contribution is like what we talked about earlier is the 401k plan because it's there's contributions being made on your behalf. Um, and you're also contributing to that as well. And pensions would also fall under non-contributory benefits. So it's kind of split up, con contributory, non-contributory, and also defined benefit and defined contribution are the two. So a contributory and defined contribution plan are going to fall under the same. Non-contributory and defined benefit are pension plans. I hope I made myself <laughs> clear. But So contributory is a 401k, non-contributory pension, defined contribution is a 401k and defined benefit is a pension plan because it is just a benefit you do not have to contribute to the plan it's just based off of work and putting in your time qualified pensions this is the criteria established by the irs and for the employer contributions to the pension plan on your behalf are tax deductible as an expense for the company and if there were some some plans that were contributory pensions, there's there's not very many. They are tax deductible for the employee. So really, contributory is going to just be for a 401k, a or a simple IRA. Pension plan trends they're decreasing like crazy. It's you know we went from a massive number a number of over 50% of companies offered a pension plan to now less than 5% of companies offer a pension plan. So we saw pension plans really continue to grow from 75 to 98 and now it has decreased substantially. Now there is the PBGC uh, pension benefit guarantee uh, Corp, which is there to make sure that everybody is abiding by and and uh, try to protect. And if there was a default, then there is this in place to help make sure you can continue to continue receiving uh, the benefits. Now, some of you may ask, like, well, why is that the case? Why are pension plans? less common and the the simple answer is people are living longer and it has gotten much more difficult in knowing how to manage the funds to fund them correctly so that instead of i mean you think about it most people would retire 60 to 65 and then they would live 5 to 15 years in retirement and now people are trying to retire a little bit earlier, but now the average life expectancy is, is 80 and that number continues to grow. So now it's more of like 15 to 20. And so the funds that are in there have to last longer and the funding, the designs haven't been done well enough, haven't been 
proper changes made along the way. And so it's gotten really expensive because what happens is that companies, if there's not enough funds in the pool inside the pension, then they've got to pony up additional funds. And the other thing is just that cost. The cost of the company has gotten so high that some of them are like, this is a headache and it's expensive. So let's just do a 401k where it's pretty cut and dry. We'll do a match and however things perform is how things perform. And, and, and that makes sense to me. It makes sense. So there's that for pension plans. Now let's talk about equity and profit sharing plans. This is most common in the startup industry where they're going to use equity or stock options to entice you to come and work for them at a lower salary than what you're probably worth. And the whole hope is like, hey, we don't have a lot of money right now, but we need good talent. So they're using this as a way to attract really, really good talent. And if everybody can do their part and it, can, it hits it big, then everybody's, you know, it's going to be worth it for everybody. And there's a lot of people in the startup that have made some good money. I guess it's kind of two. Either they've already done pretty well and they're looking for another home run or you have some good skills, but you, instead of going out and working for 75, 80,000, you're saying, I'll work for 40, I'll work for 30 with the hope that this really hits it big. And that's what I want to do is I want, I'm not interested in singles, doubles. I'm interested in home runs and that's it. So there's a lot of different ways that this type of plan can be designed. You got stock options, stock purchases, stock grants, profit sharing. And the whole idea is to provide incentive in an effort to attract and then retain that kind of talent. Employee stock option plans, you're given the option of, of stock when you can buy it and usually it's at a, a you know a lower number and the hope is that when you do go to buy it that it will be worth a lot more so you can buy it right off the bat or you can wait there usually is some sort of expiration date that is applied to it and it is subject to a vesting schedule again don't want people to just get in and get out quick you want to say no you gotta you gotta hang around for a certain period of time to have it reach its full potential so here's an example of david he receives the option to buy a thousand shares of his company's stock at a strike price at three dollars and it is a four-year vesting schedule so 25 percent every year for four years Four years from now, he's fully vested. He can he can access all 1,000 shares, and the stock price is trading now at $35 a share. Pretty dang good. So he has gained $32 a share on his options, or a gain of $32,000. At this point, David can do three things. He can do nothing, just let things keep going. Um, but essentially what this is meaning is do nothing is you don't buy it, which would be the worst decision. Two, you can exercise the right to buy a thousand shares at three bucks. Cost you three, three thousand dollars. And you can just hold the shares as long as you want. Number three, a simultaneous buy sell. So this is where the company will tell David, well, we're going to help you buy it for a thousand, for three thousand dollars and then we're going to immediately sell it so we're just going to send you the check for the difference or thirty-two thousand dollars. we're not going to have to have you pony up three and then receive 35. let's just let's just cut out everything in the middle and just send you thirty-two thousand. so that's easy that's pretty simple because most people could afford three thousand dollars to buy their shares now there's times where that that amount is could be really expensive like if the 